Hi everyone. Today in this video let us discuss about glutamate and its receptors. Glutamate is one of the important neurotransmitter in the CNS and it is widely distributed in the brain. Within the brain glutamate is uniformly distributed and it can be found in higher concentrations compared with uh, other tissues. It acts as an excitatory neurotransmitter and it have few of the metabolic roles that significantly affects various functions of the body. Glutamate can be synthesized in the brain from the two sources. It can be obtained from alpha oxoglutarate which is also called as alpha ketoglutarate. This is one of the intermediate that is obtained from the glucose via Krebs cycle. This conversion of alpha ketoglutarate to the glutamate is mediated by one of the enzyme GABA transaminase. Interestingly, the same enzyme is responsible for conversion of GABA into succinic semialdehyde. Here we can clearly observe that while glutamate is synthesized, GABA is metabolized. Here glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter whereas GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter within the CNS. That means when excitatory neurotransmitter is synthesized, an inhibitory neurotransmitter is uh, metabolized. So there is a sense to balance between the excitatory neurotransmitters and inhibitory neurotransmitters within the CNS. Another source for the glutamate is from the amino acid glutamine. Glutamine can be converted into glutamate by one of the enzyme glutaminase. Particularly this conversion is more important within the glutaminergic neurons. Just like many of the neurotransmitters, glutamate is stored into the synaptic vesicles by a special transporter that transports the glutamate into the vesicles. However, this glutamate should be synthesized from its precursors. As we have discussed earlier, glutamine acts as an important precursor for the sense of glutamate. Glutamine can be converted into glutamate by glutaminase enzyme. Now this glutamate can be stored into the storage vesicles through the vesicular transporter. And when the action potential reaches to the neuron, this glutamate can be released by calcium mediated exocytosis. The released glutamate can act on the postsynaptic receptors, otherwise it can be taken back into the nerve terminal for exchange of sodium. So these are the excitatory amino acid transporters which are going to take the released glutamate back into the neurons. Glutamate can also be absorbed into the non-neuronal cells, particularly astrocytes. So the released glutamate can be taken into the astrocytes where it is going to be converted into glutamine by glutamine synthase. So glutamine acts as a storage form of the glutamate which is going to be stored into the non-neuronal cells like astrocytes. This glutamine can be then transported into the neurons for recycling of the glutamate. For this purpose, Glutamine transporters are expressed both on the astrocytes as well as on the neurons. Now again this glutamine can be converted into glutamate by the same enzyme glutaminase. In this way glutamate is recycled and it is going to be synthesized, released and stored in a cyclic way. Now let us see how this glutamate produces its actions. Glutamate can produce its excitatory functions by acting on the glutamate receptors. These receptors can be classified into two types based on how they are functioning. They can be of two types, inotropic receptors and metabotropic receptors. These inotropic receptors are also called as ligand gated ion channels. That means they are coupled with ion channels and these ion channels are opened when glutamate binds to these receptors. Second type of receptors are the metabotropic receptors which are also called as G protein coupled receptors. Now within the brain glutamate can produce wide central actions. It acts as a fast acting excitatory neurotransmitter as well as it can also produce few of the neuromodulatory actions. The fast excitatory actions are mediated by inotropic receptors whereas slow neuromodulatory effects are mediated by G protein coupled receptors. Now let us go in detail about inotropic receptors targeted by glutamate. These inotropic receptors for glutamate are also denoted as I-glue receptors where I indicates inotropic. They can be of three types NMDA, 
AMPA and kinate receptors. All these three types of receptors produce excitation by activation of these receptors. Among these, NMDA receptors are of specific type which are involved in many of the neuronal disorders. These NMDA receptors are having some of the special features. Normally, these receptors are inotropic receptors. Therefore, they are permeable to calcium ions. However, they are also permeable to other ions like sodium and potassium, particularly in few conditions like synaptic plasticity or excitotoxicity. Another important feature is that the ion channels for these NMDA receptors are blocked by magnesium ions under resting conditions. That means when the receptor is not activated, the magnesium ions can block this ion channel. However, on activation of these receptors, the magnesium block is removed that allows the calcium ions enter through these ion channels to produce depolarization of the target membrane. As the calcium enters into the membrane, it produces depolarization leading to an excitatory response in the CNS. The target membrane may be either neuron, muscle or gland. However, these NMDA receptors cannot be activated only by action of glutamate. For activation of NMDA receptors, a small amount of glycine is also required where glycine acts as an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Again, this is one of the special feature where we can observe a sense to coordination between glutamate and glycine where glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter and glycine is a inhibitory neurotransmitter. However, the binding sites are different. Glutamate binds to a glutamate binding site whereas glycine binds to a different site where it activates NMDA receptors along with glutamate. Therefore, a small amount of glycine is also required along with glutamate for activation of NMDA receptors. Second one is the AMPA receptors. These AMP receptors are responsible for fast excitatory synaptic transmission. However, their activation exists for a short term and they are mainly permeable to sodium and potassium ions. AMP receptors have a, an important role in maintaining the seizure thresholds. AMP receptors are expressed on the astrocytes as well as on the neurons and they play an important role in maintaining the communication within the brain. NMDA receptors are coexisting with AMP receptors and they are mainly involved in long-term potentiation. Third type of receptors are the kinate receptors which are involved in the synaptic transmission. However, their role in the CNS is not completely understood. Fourth one is the metabotropic glutamate receptors. They are linked with inositol triphosphate production that, that produces increased intracellular calcium levels resulting in the excitation. Few of the metabotropic receptors are also linked with inhibition of adenylyl cyclase system that reduces the cyclic AMP. These glutamate receptors can exist either presynaptic or postsynaptically and they can also present on the astrocytes. They mainly produce modulatory effect on the neuronal transmission. Now let us see the functions of glutamate. Synaptic plasticity is involved with physiological alterations in the neuronal activity and it is associated with long-term potentiation. When the neurons are activated, they can release the neurotransmitters like glutamate. However, this is well controlled by contracting mechanisms. So each action potential exists for a short period. However, in a few cases, neurons are excited for a long term, leading to long-term potentiation. The long-term potentiation involves the both presynaptic and postsynaptic activation and it is mainly due to the activation of AMP receptors. When these AMP receptors are excessively activated, they can increase the glutamate release. This can increase the activation of NMDA receptors and metabotropic receptors leading to long-term potentiation. Therefore, on frequent activation, AMPA, NMDA and metabotropic receptors are activated that results in the increased intracellular calcium. This also activates protein kinase C, an important enzyme that can modulate the gene expression. Finally, this results in long-term changes leading to synaptic plasticity. Now, let us the drug targets acting on the glutamate receptors. Cyclosirine can act on the modulatory site on the NMDA receptors and it acts as one of the anti 
bacterial agent. NMDA receptor ion channels can be blocked by a few of the medications like ketamine which is acting like a dissociative anesthetic. Similarly, few other medications like disocilpine, fincyclidine and mimantine can also act on the NMDA ion channels. Mimantine is particularly used in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease which controls long-term potentiation and neuromodulation. Pyracetam can act as a modulator on the AMPA receptors. Till now very few drug targets are available on the glutamate receptors as the role of this glutamate is very complex in the brain. Perampanel is an AMPA antagonist that can block both AMPA as well as NMDA receptors and it is particularly useful in the treatment of epilepsy where it controls excessive activation of glutaminergic neurons. Mimantin is an NMDA receptor antagonist that can inhibit glutamate mediated excitotoxicity. Ketamine can block the NMDA receptor ion channels and it have few of the antidepressant actions. So that's all about the glutamate and its receptors in the CNS and its important drug targets. I hope this video is useful to you. If you really like this video, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.